What's up guys, Matt from footballboots.co.uk and today let's add a bit of sparkle to our custom concept videos. We'll be taking the Launch Mercurial Superfly 5 and also the CR7 324K Gold Superfly 4 and coating each boot uniquely with different types of glitter products. But can it be done and will they survive in a test? Let's find out. First point to mention if you haven't been able to tell so far, the boots we're using are fake. We weren't sure how the final look would be, so we didn't want to ruin a couple of premium price boots. So what's the first step of the glitter transformation? Well you need to decide on which parts of the boot you'll want to have the extra flashy touches. Looking at the CR7 324K first, and our idea for this boot was to add glitter across the entire upper, apart from the black Nike swooshes, so we had a tape over each large and small logo. What you need to do is overlap the tape across each front and back swoosh so it peels away in one go, but before doing so you need to outline the border ready to be cut out. As the glitter would be simply adding a sparkling effect, you don't need to be overly accurate around the swooshes. Just make sure that a general tick shape would be kept clean after the glitter had been applied and the tape pulled off at the end. These 324K golds were the boots which we hope would be the showstopper in this glitter custom video, so make sure to stay tuned nearer the end where we actually go out and test if they maintain their new look. So once we had prepped the predominantly white Superfly 4, making sure the tape was pressed down firmly, we moved on to the launch Superfly 5 which we had a different plan for. The overall black and red colorway was pretty nice, but the yellow tone used for the Nike swoosh branding looked a little bit off. So they were the areas on this boot which would get the new look. As you can see, the gloves were on, so this is where things would get a little messy. Our plan for this boot was to super glue gold glitter onto each swoosh. You probably don't need me to tell you to be careful as you don't want fingers getting stuck to the upper. A steady hand and gloves if possible would be the answer. One tricky feature of the Superfly 5 is a new speed rib upper, so we needed to make sure every individual groove of the swoosh was coated in the glue before sprinkling over the golden glitter. It's probably best to go slow and steady when doing this, as if you go over the border then you'll lose the sharp swoosh finish. You could almost dab the glue onto the upper and then push it across neatly. So the inner swoosh had been fully glued, so here's where we put the first helmet glitter onto the boot. While she needs to be neat and tidy with the glue, here you can literally dust the glitter all over the upper, as only the swoosh will be transformed once dried and gently banged off. After a gentle knock on the table, we then used the cotton bud to neaten up the final look, and our first impressions were definitely positive. There's no question a glittered swoosh made for a slicker logo compared to the original. Smaller swoosh complete, let's move on to the much larger logo on the lateral side panel. The process was exactly the same, but we decided to do this one in sections, as the glue would have dried by the time we covered the entire swoosh. Adding super glue to the front section first, we did our best to cover each groove, and then we sprinkled over the golden glitter again. It doesn't really matter how far away you hold the glitter, just make sure you're not too close that the container hits the boot, as it will affect the clean finish. The best thing to do when going in sections is to clean up the glitter so you can see which areas you've missed as you can go back onto the swoosh with more glue and glitter afterwards. So that's the first big section of the swoosh complete, looking pretty good so far. But we ran out of our first small super glue so we had to use our backup tube which actually had a nice characteristic as it allows for flex and movement without cracking. Using the exact same technique, complete the rest of the swoosh and remembering to be careful to not go over the swoosh with the glue. It's definitely best to be within the lines and outside. Once you put the glitter onto the glue, leave it for literally 10 to 20 seconds just to quickly dry and then lightly bash off loose pieces with your finger or cotton bud. This is a tricky beat production. So you've glued and glittered both swooshes. 
Just have a quick look to see if any spots need a quick top up and if so follow the same process as beforehand. Here's how the first newly glittered Superfly looks. We definitely think it was a success but now let's move on to the next boot where we use a different product and then take them out on the pitch for a test drive. So we've now got the CR7324K golds in hand, taped up and ready for the glitter coating. But we'll actually be applying a first layer of silver poster paint to see how it compares to the super glue. Using a paintbrush, dip into the poster paint, which is pretty watery to start out with, and then carefully coat onto the desired areas, making sure it doesn't run. We wanted to create a gradient effect, so we didn't glue the original gold detail on the hill cut. So the difference here is that the silver poster paint actually had a little sparkle in it already, but definitely not enough for what we wanted. So after painting a small section, we heavily dusted the boot in silver glitter to create something similar to the CR7 silverware boots. So once you've got this technique nailed down, you can then continue to do the same with the remainder of the boot, but remembering to stay away from the gradient and Nike swooshes, or whatever section you want kept clean alone. The most important part of this type of custom, if you've chosen to coat the majority of the boot in glitter, is to make sure you literally cover the poster paint all over the desired areas fully, and then add the glitter heavily on top, so there isn't any bare patches left. One thing you can guarantee from doing a glitter custom, is getting crazy sticky hands and making a mess underneath. So wear gloves if you want, and also also lay down some card or newspaper. Try your best to coat all the required areas, even around the toe and side panels, but you can always go back over the boot with glue and glitter once finished the first coat. So after we left the CR7324K gold boots to dry for a few hours, we banged off the loose glitter and then we peeled away the taped up Nike swooshes to complete the new look, which we thought looked class. But we weren't 100% sure if it would survive after a testing session. Before we take the two new boots on pitch, vote for your favourite glitter custom in the poll card now. So we're down at the pitch and the first thing we noticed was how nice the glitter sparkle looked when struck by sunlight. Glittered logos are definitely the way forward. The boots look good, both versions, but let's lace them up and have a little run and ball work bits. First off, they felt exactly the same. The glitter hadn't made them stiffer or anything like that, they just looked good. My preferred look of the two was a new CR7324K Silvers, but the glitter was definitely starting to flake off after flexing and juggling the ball. So after a bit of pinging the ball around, that's when the glitter was significantly coming off the boot. So what's our overall verdict on glitter customizations? Well, the first thing to mention is that they do look great, they really do. But in terms of durability, there's some serious issues. The super glue worked better compared to the poster paint, so what we might try next time is to apply more super glue onto the glitter as a final layer and casing. Let us know what you guys think of the glitter additions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, cheers.